Now let's get started with subtraction. Now there's quite a bit to go through in the subtraction. So we're going to split it into the two paths. So we'll look at the subtraction for the near path and also for the far path. And we'll also compare the new circuit that we've got here for subtraction with the old circuit which we have built up for purely the addition. So if you go to the resources section, you'll see there's a spreadsheet there. So you can open up the spreadsheet and also there's the Logisim file. So you can go ahead and open up the Logisim file. Now, when you open up the Logisim file, you'll see here that if you head up to the top level, so that's the little button here. So click on the top level. This is the top level for the adder and subtractor. Now there's no change in the top level from the previous design for purely the adder. We've got our X input or Y input, and we've got the adder subtractor, and we've got the result here. Now, if we were to drop down inside the adder subtractor, you'll see here that we've got the near path built here. So the right hand side here is the far path, and that's what we looked at whenever we did purely the addition. So now we've built in the near path as well. So this is based the basic architecture of the entire adder and subtractor. Now the subtraction takes place also in this far path. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the far path subtraction. So that's the subtraction down this path here, which ostensibly we've already built. So we'll compare that with what we had previously. Now I've got quite a few windows here, so bear with me while I pick out the right ones. So this is the add or sub add subtract that we uh, looked at before, but it's just the purely the addition. So we built this section here, and now we've added on this other section. But what we're interested in is the subtraction that takes place only in this far path. And we'll also cover the extra sections here, for example, the add subtract button and also the sign. So we mentioned previously that subtraction can be split into two processes. We're going to have subtraction with cancellation and subtraction without cancellation. Now we have an example here of subtraction with cancellation. So let's say for example we had 8 minus 2 is equal to 6. Then 8 can be written as 1 times 2 to the 3 and 2 can be written as 1 times 2 to the 1. So in order to do the subtraction, we have to make sure this exponent is the same as that one. So it means that this exponent has got to increase by a factor of 2. So we've done that over here. We've taken this exponent and we've increased it to a factor 2 to the 3. But if this increases by a factor of 2, in order to keep the actual number the same, this is going to be, have to be halved twice. So we're going to have to half it once, which would be 0.5, and then we would half it again, which would be 0.25. So this number here is the same as 0.25 times 2 to the 3. So this is in effect our alignment. So we're aligning the exponent values. This allows us then to go ahead with the subtraction. So now in this subtraction, we have 1 minus 0.25. Well, 1 minus 0.25 is 0.75. So you can see here that the value for the mantissa is less than 1. So really what's happening here, because the mantissa is less than 1, we're going to have to normalise this. So we want a value between uh, 1, greater than or equal to 1, and less than 2 for the mantissa. So in order to do that, we're going to have to double this. So when we double that, it becomes 1.5. But if we double this, then we're going to have to take a factor of 1 away from this as well. So that becomes 2 to the power of 2. So it means that in this instance here, when we had 8 minus 2 equals 6, we're going to have to perform a normalisation due to the fact that there's a cancellation. Now I mentioned previously that the near path would only deal with cancellations, and that's true. But there is one possibility of a cancellation in the far path. So the far path had exponent values which were greater than exponent differences that were greater than or equal to 2. So that's what we've got in this example here. We've got an exponent difference that's the one is 3 and the other one is 1. So the exponent difference here is equal to 2. So this is going to be a far path calculation. 
but you can see not only is it a far path calculation, it's still a cancellation as well. So that means that this particular instance, whenever there is a difference of two, we can potentially have a cancellation and we have to take care of that cancellation in that far path. So we're going to have a wee look at the truth tables here and compare the truth table with the add for the far path and also the subtraction here for the far path. But just to note that this cancellation here is just a one-off, meaning there's only one possibility for this occurring and that possibility is when the mantissa is a value between 0.5 and 1. So in that case we only have to double it once. So you can see here in this instance 0.75 is doubled once and then we've decreased this by a value of 1. Now the near side that deals with all of the other subtractions with cancellation and those other subtractions we're going to have a value here that's less than uh, 0.5. So we would be not just doubling it once, we'd be doubling it potentially 1, 2, 3 or anything up to 23 times. So let's have a look at the truth table that we're going to use to help us build up the actual circuit. Now I've put a reminder here of the truth table for purely the addition in the far path. So for addition in the far path, if we remember, that we're not interested in bit 24, bit 25 controlled us. So whenever bit 25 was low, we got no change. And when bit 25 is high, we had the exponent value, we would add 1 onto it, and the mantissa, we would divide by 2. So now we're interested in this subtraction for the far path, and this is the truth table we're going to talk over now. So we'll talk over the truth table, then we'll quickly have a look at them on this Excel spreadsheet. So in this truth table here, we've now got SZ is equal to 1, so it's telling us that this is going to be a subtraction. So whenever SZ is equal to 1, we're going to have just two types of output. We're either going to have a cancellation, or we're going to have uh, no, no cancellation, which is NC actually stands for no change, so there won't be any change in the values for the exponent or the mantissa. So if we have a 0 and a 0 in bit 24, now that can't, in bit 25, now that can't actually physically happen within the subtraction, and we'll see that when we have a look at the truth, truth table. So this is a don't care state, so we can make this whatever we want. So I've chosen to make this the cancellation, so it's the same as this one here. So it's EX minus 1 and MR times 2, but remember it just doesn't happen. Now we have the other option here, we have a 0 and a 1, so there's no carry through and they have no change. And the next one's going to be the one where we have the cancellation, so we have a 1 in bit 25 and a 0 in bit 24, in which case we have this possibility of a 1 bit cancellation, in which case we have the EX minus 1 and the MR times 2. So this is an example of what we have above, for example 8 minus 6 would fall into this category. Now we also have an option here for 1 1, in this case here we would also have a value which is a, there would be no change. So in this case here there would be no change here and we had a, a output would remain at EX and the output here would remain at MR. So we want to build up this truth table here, but let's quickly have a look at this in the Excel spreadsheet. So if you go ahead and open up the Excel spreadsheet, head into Tools and press the Add Subtract. Now we'll put a couple of values in at random. Let's say we put in 60 and 5 and we're subtracting. Now what we're interested in are the numbers here within our spreadsheet. So we're going to have our value for our 60, which is the x value, and our 5, which is the y value. And it's going to go through a, a, a switch here if the exponent for x is less than the exponent for y. And that's not the case, so there's no switch here. So that's just a copy into here. And then we're going to bit extend them both by 1s. 
because both of them are normal numbers. And then we're going to shift the y value here so that the y value exponent is equal to the, the x value. So it means that the y value exponent is going to be increased. And if we increase that, then we're going to have to decrease the mantissa by that same factor. So this is the alignment shift. So you can see here we've aligned shifted th these. So this means that in this instance here, we're going to do a subtraction and the subtraction is going to get done on the smallest number. So the smallest number here in this case is always going to be the y number because the y mantissa will have been shifted to the right. You're always going to be have a zero, zero, a zero starting here. So it means we're going to choose this one here in order to do the two's complement. So when we do the two's complement, we're going to end up with a value for one whenever this particular bit gets complemented. And the original value is going to be for the uh, x value is going to be this value of one as well. So we're always going to have a one and a one in here. And if we're always going to have a one and a one in here, it means that we only have two options, either we carry a one in or we don't. So if we don't carry a one in, we're going to end up with one plus one is zero, and then we would have a one here. So we can have a one zero. We could carry one in for here, in which case we would have one plus one plus one. So we could have a one and a one. We can also have a one and a zero, but we cannot have a zero and a zero because these two are always going to be ones. Now, a thing to note here is that whenever we're doing our subtraction with the far side, we don't really care about this bit 25. This bit 25 occurs really due to the fact that we're going through a two's complement here on one of the, the other values. So we can really just ignore that. We're really interested in the bit 24. And you'll see that whenever we look at the truth table. So this means that if we're not really interested in bit 25, the bit we're interested in is bit 24 for subtraction. So whenever we go through this subtraction, that is when S said is equal to a one, then we're interested to find out whether the value for the bit 24 is a zero. So if it's a zero, then we can perform this cancellation and we have EX minus one in MR times two. And just a note here that this one actually doesn't occur because we don't get a zero, zero. That's what the cross means. It means don't care. Now the other option is bit 24 goes to a one. Now if bit 24 goes to a one, again, we're not bothering about what bit 25 does. It's just an added uh, complication due to the fact that we're using two's complement. If bit 24 goes to a one, then there's no change. That is, we're left with our value for EX for the output and MR for the output for the Mantisa. So we want to build this into our new circuit for our subtraction in the far path. So let's go ahead and we'll get that done in the next video. Thank you for listening. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.